guys, welcome back to A Level Lessons. In this video, we're going to be looking at our population theorist again, covering our next theorist who is going to be Esther Bosrap. So, Esther Bosrap is going to be the second one before we finally conclude with David Harvey in the next part. So, previously we talked about Thomas Melters. Go check it out if you have not already done so. I'll leave a link in the description below as well as in the top right hand corner of the screen. Thomas Melters was quite the person, right? We could all agree on that. So go and check out why his views on population and resources were as such. And in this one, we're going to be looking at Esther Bosrop in specific. So Esther Bosrop was an economist. She studied agricultural and economic development and worked at the United Nations. So she is going to be the only one you would realize that is more towards the positive side in terms of defining resources and its relationship to the population and the world as a whole. So her population growth theory and how it's related to Esther Bosrap was that she basically saw population growth as the root of innovation and civilization. So she was highly focused on the green revolution and what is this green revolution? So this green revolution is basically trying to enforce that technology is the solution. Right? It is saying that technology is the key to increasing food supply. In this case, the increase in food supply is so that we can combat any sort of rapid rates of population growth. Right? So technology is seen as the key to ensuring that food supply is be able to meet the rising needs that arises from rapid or rising population growth. Because as we learn in Thomas Melters, we understand that the issue that he is trying to put forth is that there will come a point whereby population growth exceeds this food supply, so to speak. So for Esther Bosrap, she sees it in the different light that technology is going to be the solution to ensure that this Malthusian catastrophe does not actually occur. So the Green Revolution, let's talk about the Green Revolution, right? It was a set of research technology transfer initiatives that occurred between the 1950s and 60s. So it's quite a while back, Green Revolution has already occurred. It essentially brought about various different new ways and innovative solutions to multiplying and dramatically improving the amount of food supply that we have. So one of it was intro the introduction of genetically modified foods, otherwise known as GM foods. A lot of us has, have heard of this before. So GM foods, they are essentially modified in their genetics such that they can be resistant to drought, pests, or any other sort of diseases. All right? We also heard of this thing called aquaculture. As the name suggests, aqua, right? Aqua always think of aqua man. Think of it as being in the ocean, right? So it looks at breeding and harvesting of plants, fish, shellfish, and any sort of organisms that live in water-based environments. So we're looking at the culture and developing food supply in the areas of the sea, for example, the areas of the ocean in the, in the form of fish, self, uh, shellfish, which, as we know, are facing quick extinction where a lot of them are running out. So this has actually helped to ensure that they are able to produce at a faster rate to meet the needs of the population. Last one is vertical farming. So as vertical farming suggests, vertical, right, it means upwards. So vertical farming essentially farms and stores crops on a vertical sort of shelf-like structure, right? So a picture that you can see over here is an example, right? It is an alternative to saving space, especially with land scarcity being an increasing issue in the world, right? This has allowed for increased yields right which essentially means that there is greater harvest of crops right more food supply available in the form of vegetable and fruits because vertical farming saves space and this level tier like structure is able to have certain installations such as water pipes um, light lightings as well that makes it favorable for these plants to grow healthily so this is what the Green Revolution is, is what you're going to want to explain when you look at Esther Bosrap. So the benefits to Esther Bosrap, right? What is the benefit? What are the benefits that she has brought about? So firstly, she was highly optimistic as well as pragmatic, right? In understanding that technology today 
has advanced to a point whereby it is able to actually combat societal issues, especially food shortages that arise、um, as a result of a greater need as compared to the amount that can be provided, right? And it's usually due to population growth and various other reasons, especially within your less developed countries amongst the uneducated. So Esther Bouchard's theory is highly relevant and accurate today, unlike David Harvey or Thomas Malthus, right? Because we are living in this society, this age, whereby vertical farming, GM crops, is basically what we consume on a day-to-day -day basis, right? A lot of the food that we eat and the supply that we get actually arise from these solutions that have come out from the Green Revolution, right? So her theory is actually very, very relevant to us. And it's something that can be applied, right? So when you're looking for case studies, you can actually look for case studies that are relevant in today's society as well. So what are some of the limitations or the drawbacks? So firstly, environmental problems are still bound to emerge, right? We can't probably、uh, or possibly actually prevent every issue that comes out from population growth and this food supply issue. So there may be other trade-offs, right? Be it、um, as you pursue GM crops, right? Maybe nutrients may be depleted. GM crops could also require certain types of pesticides or fertilizers that could actually harm biodiversity in the area. One more thing would be that most advanced technology is still only found in developed countries, right? So these countries were not the ones that are actually going to or actually are experiencing food shortages. Right, because a lot of times you realize that these countries, with the income that they have, and strong government policies to import foodstuffs, would actually be able to sustain themselves pretty well. Right, they have all of this technology that allows them to multiply the amount of food that they have. So there's a need for transfer of technology to areas that are closest to a Malthusian crisis. Right, in particular, a lot of less developed countries, which May not have access to these crop types, or may not have access to technology that will be able to help them to combat any shortages in food. Should a rise in population growth occur, which is very common in LDCs, because population growth is usually it usually runs unchecked, right? Because people tend to be、um, less educated in the areas of family planning, so this could actually result in a higher rate. Of population growth, which high and far exceeds the food supply that is actually available to these people. So that's why we hear of hunger and poverty that exists in these countries. So that's all for this entire chapter. It's quite simple. So exam requirements just need to be able to explain Esther Bostrup's theory of population growth and food supply, along with any of its attached benefits and limitations, and you may be required. To compare to David Harvey and Thomas Malthus when it comes to essay writing, right? So for this entire part, okay, we'll look at case studies more in our YouTube memberships as well as、uh, over on the Patreon site. So you can check those out as well. We'll look at case studies that you can use to explain and exemplify how Esther Bostrup is relevant in today's society. And if not, that is all for this lecture. I think it's quite a simple video to understand. Basically, Esther Bostrup, a highly optimistic person, believes that technology is the key, and it indeed is. Right, it has helped us a lot in today's world in curbing a lot of food shortages that occur around the world. Right, so if you did enjoy this video and you did learn something, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. And if you have any questions, you can always leave it down in the comment section below. I will answer them as always. If not, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye bye.